The first thing I want to bring to your attention in this class is the injectable annotation here, which tells us that this class is a service, which means we have to hook it up in our main module. Again, interceptors are services. They're just, I guess, a special type of service. So we need to hook this interceptor in our module or the main module where we want to use this interceptor. So let's go back into the app module, which is down here. And what we want to do, since it's a service, we have to provide it inside of the providers array. And to do this, we're going to pass an object. And the first property is going to be provide. And we're going to pass in HTTP interceptor in all caps. And then the second one is going to be use class. So we're going to tell it which, which class we're going to use. And this is going to be the test uh, interceptor. And the last one we can pass is multi. So multi, and this is going to tell the module if we're going to have multiple interceptors. We're going to, we only going to have one. So that's technically should be false, but I'm going to set it to true for now, just in case we have more later. So this is how you hook this up, the interceptor up in the module. So now this is in this module. So whatever component belongs to this module, in this case, the app component that we're using, then they will have access to this interceptor. So now let's go back to the interceptor. And just so you understand what's going on here, we're just implementing this interceptor class. And since we do that, then we have to define this intercept function that's coming from this class. And this function take the request. So this is the request that we're making. And this is the handler that we have to pass the request to whenever we're done with the request so that the request can continue its course. And another very important thing we need to understand about the request is that it's immutable. So this request here is immutable which means that we can't change this, this object. We can actually make a clone of it and then change the clone and then pass the clone to the handler. And that's what we're going to do because in itself, we cannot change this request because it's immutable. So let's say for instance, we want to intercept every request and then we want to pass in, uh, let's say some headers or we want to modify the body or something like that. So how would we do this? So let's go ahead and let's say I'm going to define some API key here. So I'm going to say constant, say API uh, token or something like that and set this equal to some random string, right? So let's say uh, this right here is, is my token. Okay. Just some random string. Uh, let's say this token is saved in the local storage, or we're going to fetch it from some API using some of the logged in user information, whatever the case might be. The point is we have this token now. Now, what we want to do is to make a clone of this request, because remember we can't change this request directly as it is, as this object is right now, because it's immutable. So we have to make a clone of it. So I'm going to do const and then I'm going to call the request. So request that clone. And of course I need to set this equal to a variable. So let's say request copy because it's a copy and then set this equal to the clone. So this is the clone. And what we can do when we call the clone, we can also do whatever we want to do with that request there. So let's say we want to set some headers, then we will pass an object here and then we can call set headers. As you can see, it's coming up here and then we can just pass in our key. So we can say this headers, they're going to be an object. So we're going to say open and close curly braces. And then here we're going to say, let's say API uh, token, well, I want to give them the same name. So let's say API underscore uh, key, for instance, and then set this equal to the key. So we're going to say, this is the API key or API token. So now we can just pass in this clone into the request handler. So we can just copy this clone and then paste it in here. So the clone will be passed in into the request and then this header will be added into that request. And another way we can do this is to pass in just the token, but it will give it the same name as the key and as the value. But if we want to give it a different key value pair, then we have to put the name and then the value. But if you could just do this like this, this will also still work. As you can see, we get no error. But the only difference is it's going to be API token as the key of the header. And then this is going to be the value. So let me put this back and I'm going to show you the difference, but that's not really super important. Just thought I would tell you. So now if we run this application and check it in the request that's being made, we'll see that this token will be added. So let me double check. Okay. The application is running. So I'm going to go back here and just, uh, 
clean this, expand this a little bit, go to the network tab where the HTTP requests are being made, and we probably need to fix this URL. So let me go back to the app, go to the service, and remove the extra S's, and go back. So now, if we look, for instance, at any of these requests, and expand this, and scroll down here to the request headers, as you can see here, you can see at the bottom, we have API key, and then we have the random string that I passed in. And again, if we just remove the name, so let's go back, remove the name here, and just pass an API token, then it's just gonna have the same name. So you can see here, we can check any one of those. And you can see right here, we have the API token, and then we have the token passed here. So we can do it the same way. If we wanna give it a specific name that's different from this, then we can just put it the way that I had it earlier, which is just like that. So that's us modifying the headers, but you can also modify the body. So what I'm gonna do for more space is just put this on a new line. So if I go here and put a comma and then do control space, you can see all different things that I can access. So method, URL, set parameters, and a bunch of other things. And if I start typing body, you can see that I can change the body as you can see here. So here, if I wanna pass a body, I can put the body and then let's say this is gonna be an object. And here we can do something like, uh, let's say hello, and then set this equal to a string for instance. So let's say um, world or some dummy example like that. So we're gonna pass in the body, which is gonna be a JSON object and it's gonna have a key of or a property of hello with a value of world. So that's just a dummy example. I just wanna show you that you can actually access the body and then modify that body as well. And we won't be able to see the request body in the browser because the browser is only showing the headers. So if you want to see what this request look like, we can actually just console log it. So I'm gonna do console.log and then pass in the uh, request copy, so request copy here so that we can see what this request looks like as it goes out to the internet so let's go back to the browser and let's just look at any of those requests and or actually we need to go to the console and you can see here in the test interceptor here that i have this request that i'm console logging and we can take a look at it you can see the body here has a low and then world and everything else that's in the body already that we can actually access or modify in our clone. So you can change the body, you can add headers and we can expand this header as well. And you can see that our API key is here, which is an array and you can see the key is API key. The value is the dummy string that we passed in. Now, like I said before, interceptors are really, really useful and they're heavily used in Angular and you can use them to catch errors. As you can see here, it's a point where all requests are gonna go to. So what they would do is they would call the pipe operator on here. So they would just call the pipe operator and then do exactly what we did in the service here. So they would call the pipe operator and then do catch error and then do this piece of code here, which is just gonna run this error here. Well, this is just an example, but you would have your actual error handling function that's gonna take care of handling all your errors. Since this is a point of uh, all the requests going in and out, then that would be a good place to handle errors. It's also a good use case for caching. So whenever you request data and the data comes back, then you can also use the pipe operator to tap into that data or just look into it or just make a copy and then save it to your local cache and things like that. So this is how you use interceptors and you can have multiple different interceptors. So you can have one for authorization, one for caching and one for handling errors, or you can do multiple things in one interceptor. So it's up to you on how you wanna design the application. So I hope that was useful to you and I will see you guys in the next video.